Welcome back. We are getting ready for our second out of two top four matches. Um, we just saw Ricky Green defeat Alex Williams um, in the first top four match to take himself to the finals. And he's uh, awaiting his opponent who will be decided by this match. Um, in this match, we have Ben Romas versus uh, Leonard Kraft III. Um, both of these players already have played once today in Swiss, um, with Leonard being the victor in that particular match. Um, however, you know, Pokemon is Pokemon, you know, just because you win one set doesn't mean you're going to be guaranteed to win the next against the same player. Um, you know, so we're going to see, um, how well these players know their opponent's team as well as their own to know what it is that they need to do in order to be successful and take themselves to the finals. Um, I believe both of these players have been on stream already. I know Leonard was, um, but I don't recall enough about their teams to talk about it. But now we've got team preview. So on the left, you see Dewal um, excuse me, Leonard's team, which consists of Amoongus, Xerneas, Nihilego, Incineroar, uh, Rayquaza and Tapu Fini. And on the right, you see Ben's team, uh, which consists of Kyogre, Togedemaru, Landorus, Rayquaza, Tapu Koko, and Milotic. Um, so in Ben's match earlier, we saw Milotic put in a lot of work, um, just being able to spread Icy Wind and just prevent, um, you know, any sort of speed control when he played against, uh, I believe it was Josh. So maybe Milotic doesn't carry as much, uh, in this match, but it's definitely something to watch out for. Um, Icy Wind can be very crippling um, when that's your only form of speed control. Um, so that's definitely something that I'm sure Ben is aware of, uh, wants to try to utilize. And we'll also see if that Togedemaru makes an appearance. Um, it's going to be a little bit harder for it to spread Alysis with Nuzzle due to Leonard's uh, Tapu Fini, which would block any sort of uh, your status condition. Um, but of course, it could still get that paralysis onto that Rayquaza, who is not, uh, you know, is prone to the effects of uh, status uh, due to not being grounded. Um, so we're going to see what these players led with. Um, I have no, like I know Leonard won when they played earlier, but I have no idea what strategies they used. So this is as new for me as it is for all of you. All right, so we do see Ben leading with Milotic and Landorus um, as Ed and leads with Amoongus and Xerneas. So Amoongus um, is going to be able to redirect any sort of attacks. Kind of help Xerneas set up for free. It may take an Icy Wind, which can't be redirected due to being spread. Um, but that's definitely something, if I'm Leonard, I would rather get uh, Icy Winded and get set up. Uh, so Amoongus actually goes for a Protect, not going for a Rage Powder, as uh, Z Ground is coming out from Landorus. So if this went into the Xerneas slot, uh, this could be a really, really big turn for Ben. But if he was more worried about getting rid of that Amoongus, uh, you know, maybe it's not quite so much. So excellent protect from Leonard um, by taking this uh, Z move, you know, into the protect rather than taking the full force of it. Um, that is going to be huge as uh, Xerneas doesn't go for the setup instead goes for the dazzling gleam uh deals a decent chunk of damage to that landorus uh not a whole lot to the milotic um and it gets icy winded for its trouble um so one of the problems here is that if leonard goes ahead and boosts up right now there's potential that he just takes a second icy wind back to neutral speed and losing that speed advantage um from boosting is going to be big so now we see landorus going for a rock slide um, not wanting to hit its partner with an Earthquake, as Milotic goes for another Icy Wind. So that's going to drop both... Drop this Xerneas down to minus two speed, uh, which is a pretty significant speed drop. As Xerneas goes for the Geomancy, which is going to 
reset um, that speed and boost its or excuse me, it's special attack and special defense by two, making it a very threatening offensive powerhouse um, so long as it can move before its opponents. Um, the main problem, of course, here is that it's still going to be faster and be able to uh, potentially hit it with an earthquake um, through, you know, while ignoring rage powder. Uh, unfortunately for Leonard there, his Amoongus did flinch. Um, one of the reasons to go for Brock Slide, honestly, um, you know, you have a strong possibility of flinching at least one opposing Pokemon if you're faster than them. Um, you know, so that's going to block any sort of spore or whatever that Amoongus may have gone for. So, Leonard going ahead, switching out Amoongus for Incineroar. That is going to get an Intimidate on both of Ben's Pokemon, giving Milotic a plus two special attack boost, you know, for the, for the trouble. However, it's going to weaken this Rock Slide coming out from Landorus, which is going to be pretty big, as, uh, you know, the Rock Slide does cause the flinch, and in, uh, you know, thanks to that flinch, Milotic was free to get a haze off, um, removing its own boost, but more importantly, removing the uh, Geomancy boost that Xerneas had acquired for itself. Um, so that's actually a really good turn for Ben. Um, he also reset the uh, the Intimidate that he took from his uh, there, uh, bringing him back up to full power for that as well. So we do see the fake out into the Milotic, um, preventing it from moving, as well as a U-turn off of the Landorus, um, which allows Ben to bring in his uh, Kyogre. Um, Azurians is yet to move, so we could be seeing, you know, a Dazzling Gleam. Kyogre is going to take a little bit of chip damage. But with its large special bulk and the fact that... Um, hasn't been uh Arnius has lost its boost you know it's not quite as threatening so we do see the moon blast into the milotic not enough to pick up the ko um, but looks like it's put it in range for one more this incineroar of course is very threatened um by this kyogre um it's going to deal a heap of damage you know with a potential water you know basically any potential water type attack Xerneas, of course, you know, doesn't have the ability to boost anymore, so it's not nearly as threatening as it could be in the early game. So, Leonard protecting his Xerneas, um, but just leaving his Incineroar, probably wanting to sacrifice it. That way he can get a free switch. Well, not a free switch. He's losing a Pokemon in order to accomplish it. But get a switch in for something else without it taking damage in the process. So we do see Milotic going for the Icy Wind um, into the Protect after Incineroar fainted. So not dealing any damage there. But that's also one of the reasons that Leonard potentially didn't want to switch something to preserve the Incineroar. He felt it was more important to not take a speed drop from something. So in comes Rayquaza which is going to like remove the boost to uh, water type moves with its airlock ability and if it mega evolves you know set the strong winds delta stream um, which is going to protect it from uh, some of the damage of ice type attacks which can be very important uh, do see no switches coming out this turn as uh, Rayquaza goes ahead and mega evolves setting the Strong winds, which are going to protect it from attacks that are super effective against flying type Pokemon. No protects on either side of the field, so Dragon Ascent into uh, what looks like the Kyogre. Yep, into the Kyogre, and that's going to deal a heap of damage, you know, just over 50%, uh, which is pretty significant as Moonblast comes out from the Xerneas into the Milotic, and that is enough to pick up the KO. Uh, so that's a big. Leonard. Um, he takes an Origin Pulse here. Uh, this is out of the Rain Boost, uh, which is, of course, important um, because if it was still in Rain, it looks like it would have dealt enough damage to Xerneas. Um, um, so Rayquaza, you know, doing a lot of work on this turn by... Uh, by... Uh, 
removing the rain and also just dealing a ton of damage to that Kyogre. So um, Ben has brought in his own Rayquaza here. Um, speed tie here. And if Ben wins it, it's likely that his Rayquaza is able to KO Leonard's due to the defense drop from using Dragon Ascent. Um, bit of a dangerous game to play between these two. So Leonard doesn't want to uh, deal with that right now. Goes ahead and brings in his Amoongus. Um, so we do see the Dragon Ascent without Mega Evolving, um, which I think is actually a pretty good call there. Because by not Mega Evolving, um, Ben is able to use Airlock to prevent Rayquaza from reducing the damage of Ice Beam. So I actually really like that decision to not Mega Evolve on that turn. Um, you know, Ice Beam the Rayquaza uh, because it switched out. But uh, regardless, that's a, you know, it's a pretty good turn to have, um, you know, keeping Airlock around. That way you can hit the Rayquaza with the full power Ice Beam instead of, you know, reduced by 50% due to Delta Stream. I really like that play. I think it, you know, to work out very well. So we do see the Amoongus going for a Protect now. Need to try and stick around for an extra turn as it does bait the extreme speed into itself as Dragon Ascent comes from Leonard's Rayquaza that should be enough to pick up the KO. Ah, it's into the opposing Rayquaza. Bringing it down to its Focus Sash. Uh, so now an Ice Beam is going to come out and connect with Leonard's Rayquaza and it is not quite enough. Oh, it is. Excuse me. Um, I lagged a little bit. So it is able to pick up the KO there. And this is going to leave a low HP Amoongus versus Rayquaza Kyogre. I'm not really seeing it out. Um, you know, that Focus Sash especially was very, very important for um, keeping Ben's Rayquaza around. Uh, you know, to allow it to fire off that attack. For it to be threatening on this next turn, as well as keeping it... Uh, you know, keeping it from fainting to keep the airlock effect in effect, um, preventing strong winds from reducing the damage from Ice Beam. Um, so, um, Ben turned that, you know, has turned this match around. He lost in Swiss, and it looks like he's, you know, he's found what it is he needs to do, uh, you know, turning that match around. It'll be interesting to see. We're going to see if Leonard. Um, takes a slightly different approach uh, in this next game to, you know, force a game three. Uh, that haze from Milotic definitely um, been had there. So it gave him the opportunity to really kind of reduce the threat of Xerneas to allow him to utilize the rest of his Pokemon. I appear to be lagged, boys. Whitney, I, I just jumped back in. All right, sorry about that. I had to refresh my browser because the screen sharing lagged, so. It might be because I just jumped back in, Whitney, so. Okay. Hey. Joined once again by Carl Schatzberger. Um, you know, to help me out, and so I'm not playing a solo game. Did you get a chance to watch that last uh, that last game? I just, I watched probably the last three four turns, so I'm not really like caught up on how this has gone. Okay, so as I was saying, the really really important turn was uh, when Ben hazed away Xerneas's Geomancy boost. Um, that was really critical in. Uh, you know, weakening the threat of Xerneas. So, mm. it played very well up to that, you know, protecting on the Z-move and everything else. Um, but once he got hazed away, that really kind of cleared the way. And Ben did not Mega Evolve his Rayquaza in order to keep Airlock, um, which was very critical in um, uh, Leonard's Rayquaza with... Uh, with Ice Beam, you know, without being affected by Delta yes. Stream. Um, it was really well played. That was so smart. We see uh, Tapu Koko going for a Discharge. Um, you know, this is sort of the uh, 
old timey, but it's like, you know, a 2011 Disquake strategy. You know, Landorus is not affected by discharge. Um, so that gives Ben a way to, you know, hit both Pokemon without worrying about hitting himself, not worried about Rage Powder or whatever coming out. So I do like Leonard's play here, bringing in his. That way he makes sure his. Uh, does not get paralyzed by that discharge, um, but he does take a heap of damage uh, from that Z earthquake. Um, but he is does survive and is able to set up uh, Geomancy. So even though he's on low HP, like this could be you know a good opportunity to pick up some KOs with his uh, with his Xerneas, you know, regard despite HP remaining. Yeah, I, the landers could be trained to live a plus two dazzling gleam. That's uh, that's a feasible thing for landers to do. Uh, but if it's no, if it's got no bulk, then both of these Pokemon could go down to a, a plus two dazzling gleam. So it might be up to the Rayquaza in the back for Ben to finish up the Xerneas with extreme speed. But we'll see. All right, so we do see um, the. Uh... Tapu Fini switching out in favor of Amoongus as this plus two Dazzling Gleam does pick up the KO on both of these Pokemon. Uh, so, yeah, exactly like you said, I can't imagine Ben not bringing his Rayquaza um, is in a decent position to pick off the uh, Xerneas with extreme speed, but of course he's also got to watch out, you know, he could... Um, Dream speed into a protect and get spored. Um, a little bit of like 50, right? If the Xerneas doesn't protect, yeah. you want to pick up the KO, but if it does protect, you know, maybe you want to uh, Mungus instead. And uh, another important thing here is as long as this Rayquaza is on the field, um, Kyogre is not going to get any benefits from the rain um, so that kind of weakens the Kyogre just a little bit so we do see the Rayquaza protecting and Leonard not going for the protect so I think Leonard just made that call I think Leonard just called that he would protect to scout out for Leonard's protect so um, Leonard gets a decent amount of damage off onto that uh Oh, wow. He gets some damage off onto the Rayquaza, or excuse me, onto the Kyogre, um, but the Spore falls into the Protect. Um, so I think Leonard was definitely like... He was kind of playing there into thinking, all right, Ben is going to predict me to Protect, so he's going to attack my head. Uh, it, it's hard to say for sure what it was his yeah. goal there was. Um, so now it's hard yeah. to say, uh, based on the damage rolls from Leonard's Rayquaza earlier into, uh, you know, it could be in range to go down to a Dragon Ascent here, um, which could be really big. We have I seen... I think it is. I think last time it did about 65% or so. I think he's in range here. Um, so there's mind games here as well with the, like, a Rage Powder play. Um... The other thing, of course, is that, um... Uh, a uh, like a 50% berry on Amoongus. So a part of me wonders if it is the flying attack reducing berry, um, which mm -hmm. could have been Leonard wasn't afraid to, you know, just leave his Amoongus in on the uh, the Rayquaza. So we do see this. Uh, wow. So, yes, yeah, so we see the uh, the Dragon Ascent into the opposing Rayquaza, um, or into the opposing Kyogre. Uh, not quite enough to pick up the KO, and there is no Koba Berry there, so this... Uh... So the Dragon Ascent did pick up the KO onto Leonard's uh, Amoongus, and again, just like what he did last game, leaving his uh, Rayquaza in 
uh, non-mega form in order to maintain that uh, in order to maintain airlock um, to prevent yeah. the uh, delta stream from reducing the ice beam damage um, super super critical now well, you know if uh, this Tapu Fini is able to survive a dragon ascent and has a berry still available to it you know maybe a couple of icy winds could do the trick here but I'm just not feeling like that's going to be a possibility for this Tapu Fini um, and See how this damage falls, because I also thought that Rayquaza was for sure going to be able to pick up the KO on the opposing uh, Kyogre, so... Looks like I'm just bad at damage, Calyx, boys, as uh, Ben's Rayquaza does pick up the KO into uh, Leonard's uh, Tapu Fini, giving Ben game two and taking him to the finals. So we are going to see wow. Ricky Green versus Ben Romas in the finals. Yeah, this will, well, perhaps to both players there. They got super far. They got some championship points. Um, yeah, absolutely, you know. Yeah, and Leonard, of course, he's when he comes to these locals, which he comes to virtually every local, he's always one of the, the top threats, you know. Uh, so great job to him. Great job to Ben. Uh, and yeah, yeah well played finals. by Ben. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead so on Ben's I've play, because just... it's great. I've just got to say, I've just been really impressed with the way he utilized Rayquaza. Um, Leonard's Rayquaza was Assault Vest, you know, so like making sure that it doesn't have any damage reducing weather for it in order to pick up the KO with Ice Beam in both games, you know, just really well played, very smart in my opinion, and, uh, you know, super, super pivotal in uh, helping for those games. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, and uh, he's got some uh, interesting text too, like the discharge. We saw him use that actually on his own my my Lodic uh, back in first couple rounds. But uh, okay, finals are coming up here. This will be a good one, y'all. So stay tuned. <laughs> 